Hello again, friends. So what do we have for you here today? Uh, over the last several months, I've been accumulating various bits and pieces to create this ANVRC92E system. And uh, you've hopefully you've watched my other videos of the unboxing of all this stuff, but we're now at a, at a place where we can start putting it all together and do some tests. And uh, so let's, we'll, we'll quickly point to everything that we've got here and, and what it all is. So uh, on the left is the 28 volt power supply that plugs into the AC. Uh, next to it is a power meter. And the idea is we're gonna, we're gonna test these things for power out. Here is the LS671 speaker and a connected microphone to it. In the middle, we have the two RT1702Es, uh, which are Singar's radios, 88 to 90 megahertz, 90, yeah, 90 megahertz. And they have all kinds of features, uh, cryptography, frequency hopping. Uh, the cryptography in these radios are uh, legal to own because it is not, does not contain US military type one encryption. It has uh, commercial off the shelf type encryption. Here, you might've seen this in a previous video where I, uh, did some, uh, did a, a test of situational, and awa situational awareness. Uh, this is a enhanced CDU control display unit. Uh, here is another speaker for the other radio. So uh, this speaker on the left, everything on the left side is the bottom radio. And that is the A radio. The bottom radio is the A radio. Uh, everything on the top, this radio here, is everything on the right side. And so that's a that's the separate uh, amplifier, 50 watt amplifier, which makes this a, a, a 92. Without this amplifier, that's a, it's a 91, v, VRC 91. The second amplifier makes it a VRC 92. Uh, here again, we've got an LS671 uh, hand mic. And finally, uh, another power meter so that we can take measurements of that one. So let's go through how it all fits together and how we all wire it up. Okay, so we're looking at the back of everything now. Uh, and here's the power supply, watt meter. Here's the back of the TRM mount, the, the VAA mount for the two radios. Uh, and here is the external power amplifier for the, uh, um, the, the top radio, sorry the top radio uh, on its side so you can see how this works. So uh, let's start on this side. Uh, the, this takes two cables. Uh, one is the power cable because it needs to generate RF uh, at 50 watts, so it needs power. And then this cable here, the thinner one, is a control cable which uh, tells the radio what band, I think, these, I think these amplifiers cover three bands, 30 to 89. Uh, I think they cover it in three bands. And so this, uh, this cable tells it which uh, band it's on and other, any other information. So let's, we'll put these all together here. Okay, uh, we'll put the power, this is the power, uh, the power out. So this is power in, which will come from the power supply. Uh, this is power out for any other um, device. For example, the, this power amplifier. And on the bottom of the power amplifier, very interestingly, there's a yet another power out, so you can continue to daisy chain other devices. Okay, um, let's put the power, the power on. Uh, this is the power that comes from the power supply, and that goes in here. I'm trying not to get in my own light, kind of hard to do. And these are the two intercom or speaker ports. Uh, this is the lower the A radio, and this is the upper, the B radio. Uh, but first, let me tell you a little bit about these LS speakers. So here's an LS671 speaker. Uh, it's designed to be used, you see this little uh, clip here. That's designed to be used with an H250 hand mic. This is not an H250 hand mic, but it would essentially go in there. 
And at the bottom of it, you see this, I think it's 18 pins, I haven't counted exactly, but I think it's something like 18 pins uh, uh, style connector. And it takes one of these uh, type of, of cables. Uh, it's got two males. See if we can get it focused in here. Uh, now, what's special about this? You, well, we connect one side here and one side to the, to the LS speaker. It doesn't seem all that complicated, but a lot of people get it wrong and wonder why it doesn't work. And the reason is, let's again, let's see if we can get this focused, because the sides are not wired the same. So you can see one side of this cable is labeled radio, if you can see that. And then the other side of the cable is labeled speaker and never the twain shall meet. So uh, if you put the wrong end on the wrong device, it won't work. So let's hook these up. Okay, so let's make sure this is in good. Make sure this is in good. We now have power. This is the first speaker for the um, lower radio, which is the A radio. And we just have to find the key, the keying and the rotation, the clocking. It's a pretty robust connectors, I have to say. Huge, but uh, very robust. And then this is the speaker. This will be for the uh, top radio, the B radio. Same thing. And let's get this rotated in the right place. There we go. Okay, looks pretty good. So let's look at all the cabling up front here. So for starters, uh, the AC line comes in here from the wall. DC comes out of the power supply into the back as we just showed. Um, let's look at the radio. So the bottom radio, which is the A radio, the, uh, the low level RF comes out here. The low level is uh, from milliwatts up to five watts. And that goes in, into here, where this is the 50, first 50 watt amp for the A radio. Comes out of the amplifier with this gray coax and into this power meter, uh, dummy load power meter. Okay, um, and a very similar setup for the right side. So for the top radio, the B radio, um, the RT comes out again at the fairly low level and goes into here, the bottom BNC called RT, and then out of the top part of the amplifier here goes into this watt meter. This is a VHF watt meter, the other one's HF, but we'll, uh, it, it'll get close enough to, to give some good readings. Uh, we already showed these, there's a switch on these, turn them on and off, and here, uh, it's a kind of a squelch. Uh, it'll stop, uh, it'll turn off the speaker the mic will continue to work, and then you've got a volume control. And I guess the last piece of this setup is this uh, enhanced CDU, control display unit, um, which I connected. There are two uh, ports that it can be connected to. I've connected down to the bottom, the A, the A radio on the bottom, but it also could be connected up to the B radio on top. Or you can have a separate, a second one for the B radio. So what's left? Let's power these things up and see what we've got. First goes the power supply. Then there's a circuit breaker, CB1 here, uh, as well as one on the amp. But we'll just turn the one on the external amp on now. And let's switch it on. Let's turn these on, the speakers. Know if you can see this is booting up as well. Okay, so they're both on, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but they're both on frequency hopping uh, F100. And the first thing we want to do is we want to test these speakers, the output, uh, so we want to be able to get noise. And normally you would just turn, uh, sorry, turn the squelch off. Uh, but in frequency hopping mode, there also happen to be in CT, which is uh, um, ciphertext mode. In order to get the squelch to open up, you have to be in plain text, and I believe you have to be in single channel. So let's just set that up now. 
Okay, so hopefully you can see this. I moved the camera a little bit. So we're gonna go through the menu on the top one. Uh, we don't care about volume, don't care about the channel. Power, we don't care about at this time. Uh, this is what we wanna change. We wanna change, so we hit seven, the CHG. From frequency hopping, we're gonna go to single channel. Uh, let's go to the next option. Comsec, we, want, we don't want cipher text. We want plain text, which is PT. Okay, I think that's all we need to do. Okay, so uh, we did all that. And you can hear the top radio is complaining. It's giving it a, a, a beep. And the reason is, is because we never set it, we never filled the frequency. So let's do that. So to fill the frequency, we're gonna, well, let's see if we can do it. I think we gotta go to the load function. Let's see, let's go frequency, clear, no. Okay, so we have to go down to the load function which I believe is right there. And I'm gonna say frequency, clear, that's it. And we're gonna put in, just say 51 megahertz, and store. Okay, now we can go back to uh, operate. And if we go to squelch off, it should give us rushing noise. Okay. That's this uh, right-hand speaker operating. Let's do the same thing for the bottom radio. If I can remember all the details. So we go here, we go to, um, I'm gonna change this from frequency hopping to single channel. And the comm set, we're gonna change from clear text, I'm sorry, cipher text to plain text. I'm gonna store it. Now this one should also, I believe, start complaining. Yeah, you can hear it. And in this case, it actually gives you a better error message. The other one just gave you all zeros. Uh, but this one is good, it tells you fill one, which means uh, that there's no fill in the, in the channel you've selected. So let's go to load. Okay, we're loading, we're in load position to load the fill. Frequency, clear, and we'll set this one on 52 or 50, yeah, 52 megahertz. Store. Okay, so that's all set. And let's turn the squelch off and we'll be able to hear this radio, this speaker here. Okay, and I can also demonstrate that you can push the button in, the knob in to turn off the speaker. So the next test we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bottom radio, uh, which you remember the bottom radio is everything on the left here, uh, and we're going to set the power uh, with and without the external amp, and we're gonna watch the power on the power meter. Let's put it on the low six watt setting, which is the bottom scale. So let's go to medium, and let's see what we get here. Okay, there you go. So you see, we do get some deflection, uh, but it's less than a watt, uh, less than a watt. Fine, and let's go now to the high setting. Oops, not volume, sorry, don't care about volume. And change that from medium to high. I think you can hit this to exit out. And this should go to about 10, 10 watts, I'm sorry, five watts which on, on the low level is just to the right. Okay, so four and a half watts, and remember this is a, an HF watt meter. So about four and a half watts. Uh, now, all the settings, low, medium, and high, uh, none of them actually make use of the external power amp. That's all within the radio itself. So let's go to the next higher power, which is PA, which is power amp. You can see that says PA for power amp. And now it's turned this on, it's set the right uh, bandpass filters. And when I key up, uh, now I'm putting this in the 150 watt position, which is the top scale. We should get about 50 watts, which is right about in the middle. Hopefully you can see that. There it is, just a hair over 50 watts. Great, so this power amp is working, this radio seems to be working fine. 
and let's do the exact same test on the top radio. Okay, so now we're going to do the top radio. Uh, top radio set to 51 megahertz, going through this 50 watt amp and into this watt meter. And this watt meter has two settings, 15 watt and 60 watt. You can see, hopefully you can see the scale on the bottom is 15 and 60. So let's do the same, same test here. Uh, we go to menu setup, go to high power, and key up now we should start seeing it. There we go. So on the lower scale, that's about four watts. You can see that. Okay, and let's do the next one. Let's go to the PA, the power amp, which enables this external power amp. And for this one, for 50 watts, uh, we'll switch it to the 60 watt setting. And you can see 60 is all the way to the right. And 50 is just the, the next number before it. Okay, and as, if you can see that, we're getting about 60 watts out of this amplifier, which is great. Another 20% uh, more than advertised. All right, for the final test, we're gonna do some receiving and transmitting so you can see uh, the two radios operating. And I'm going to attempt to use uh, my new stereo mi microphones to see if I can, uh, you know, you get the, the, the left uh, radio, the, the bottom radio and, and the top radio. Uh, and we're gonna use, uh, put this near the speaker here so you may not be able to hear me so good. Okay, I've clipped that on to the, to the right speaker, which is the top radio, and I've got one clipped on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this handheld radio uh, to transmit so, and receive. So if you can see here, uh, that's on 51 megahertz, and a simple uh, change to the top here, we'll put it on 52.000 megahertz. Uh, and so let's do 51 uh, first, which 51 is the top radio. Uh, the top radio will, of course, go to the, uh, the right-hand um, speaker, and hopefully it'll be on the right side of your audio. This is a test. This is a test. This is a test. Test, test, test. Okay, that works, and let's do it the other way around. Um, hopefully you can hear it from here. Test, 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 test. 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 So what I'm doing is I'm transmitting on the Singar's ASIP radio, and we're hearing it here. Test, 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 test. Okay, and then we'll switch the frequency uh, from 51 to 52. And now that should be the bottom radio, the A radio, which is the stuff on the left. And hopefully the, we'll hear it on the left side of the audio. This is a test, 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 test on the left audio, 15 megahertz. And then we'll do the exact same test here. Set that right next to the next to it, so you can hear the audio, and we'll transmit on the um, sorry on the bottom Singar's radio, and you'll hear it here. Test, test, test. 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 This is a test. test. W2H. W2H. test. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to show was the enhanced uh, control display unit, uh, which is working uh, fine on the bottom radio. Uh, I could have attached to the top radio if I wanted, or get a second one. Uh, I've got lots of videos on my channel uh, about this display unit that you can go see. Well, that's it. That concludes this whole series of getting this new TRM dual ASIP Singars radio set up in the VRC92 configuration, which is two high-power 50-watt amplifiers, uh, and getting it all running. And maybe this spring, I'll look into installing this in my Land Rover, uh, and replacing the older style 1439 uh, wide, uh, wide body uh, Singar's radio with this thing. Okay, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.